Welcome, public inventors. You move this triangle by sliding it, and then you wait three or four seconds. And the big robot moves to match what you did over there. Down this way. Yeah, well, almost. There's a little bit more. Let's see. Who's this? Yeah. Oh, you got it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, but the idea here is to do ranges of motion which traditional robots can't. So if you want to move that, see if you can move this so that it hits me in the face. Oh, you got it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> These right here, which are uh, called linear actuators, which is basically a motor that moves in one direction. Why did you do? Yeah, so actually. Well, what direction does it go? You know, it goes, it can only go in, a, in like a line of direction. So, like, this little oh, parts are 3D printed. Yeah. Yeah, we, this is all 3D printed, and then we 3D printed the, the joints on here. And uh, the casings for Arduino, our Arduinos that we used to control it. But eventually, we want to get for a bigger version. We want to get a machine shop to actually build it for us for like the actual small parts. But for our prototype, the 3D printing works extremely well. More. Almost. Oh, you got it. <laughs> But they can move around like a slug. So instead of being like a human being with arms and articulated joints or like a quadruped, they, we want something that can crawl and move, kind of like an object. And so the idea here is to take a crust like structure and replace it with linear actuators that can change their things. And so it's running a demo program in a minute, it's going to get big and then it's going to get really small to show that. But it's also the case that our, our previous robot could actually crawl around rather slow, between 15 inches in a minute. So this is moving into the biggest position that it can move. Now it's going to move into the small Run in. So to make a true tentacle like actuator, it can do this, or a true snake. And then where would this robot rest? Well, that's a good question. I consider it very researchy, so I don't really want to tell people how it's going to be. But the example that I often use is you could make a crawling pedestrian bridge. They could just crawl out across the street, arch itself up. People could come cover it with plywood, and then people could walk over it. And then when you're done with it, because maybe the weekend's over or whatever, it just crawls back onto the truck and you drive away with it. Another example would be in an emergency situation building is it doesn't happen that much in America, but in other places they have You know, you can crawl under a building, raise it up, and then let people look for a survivor. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Okay. Basically, by manipulating the puppet, it becomes possible for a human being to understand the structure without having to do the math to compute the claims, right? So the idea is you can move into the field, give the puppet to a work person, and the, that person could use the puppet to control the position of the legs or the nodes in a very sophisticated way. And if you had a big fork on here, you can imagine grabbing something, moving it in a very complex way so it doesn't fall on a survivor in the building, you know, to move it out of the way. In, in a way that would be very hard to do with a bulldozer or a backpack. Hey, good job. <laughs> good job. All right. In, this is uh, a specific program? Uh, so I wrote this. This okay. is the JavaScript program, but it leans very heavily on the graphic system called 3.js and the, the physics engine called Gamma. So I didn't build my own physics engine. I programmed it physical structure of the robot, but the physics, like the gravity and the friction, is done by the physics. 